My name is His Royal Highness, President, Engineer, Sir, Jeffrey. I'm the traditional ruler of Amaoka, an Aoka Autonomous Community. I live at Amaoka, on the on Tuesday. Tuesday, on the 11th, about 11th of uh, June, I was in my house. I heard some gunshots in the village because I didn't go out. I learned that the Nigerian army came into the village with five deluxe buses. I didn't see them. I didn't see either the army or the deluxe buses. But I learned that they came into the village. I heard gunshots. That was on Friday, I think it's 11. Um, at the end of the day, I learned one person was killed at Amau. He's a civilian. I don't know his name. And then around 7.30 in the evening, the police, the army retired into a college. Our college is Amatex Amango Technical Secondary School and they lost there. Uh, the next morning, they came back early in the morning, around 7.30 in the morning. I was in my house all through. I didn't come out. By that time, when my people heard the gunshots, everybody was scared. People started running out from the village. And by Saturday, the next day, that's I think it's around 12, 12 of June, almost 90% of the communities had deserted Amau. Of course, even though I was scared, but I felt as a traditional ruler, I shouldn't leave my village. I remained steadfast in the village. On Saturday, about noon, a boy, uh, an Okada man, was carrying a girl passenger. He came into the village. And uh, as uh, he was uh, the, the girl he's carrying was embarking from the motorcycle. I learned the, he was shot by the Nigerian soldiers. And the boy ran away and entered into one, a one house at Ndambela compound. These soldiers pursued him there and scattered his breast, his uh, stomach, and his legs. And then they left there. As they were leaving from that place, there is a, a line of provision stores. They set those line of provision stores on fire. They stopped at uh, one man call, called, uh, they call him Master. He has a provision store too. They told him, where is that man? Where is that man, the cripple man? Where is he? He said he's living there. He pointed to the house of that man. And uh, unfortunately for him, he could not walk because he's very sick. This man, the, 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 the fought. In fact, they had poured petrol on his shed. That's what he told me yesterday, that they poured petrol on his shed. And that petrol flashed on his leg, on his foot, and he knew he was in danger. He, was, he locked himself up in the house, and he opened the store. So they, they wanted to molest him. He said, Biko, please, I'm sick, I'm sick. Look at my leg. And they said, go and show us that, that crippled man. They carried him at their back. And uh, on the way to that place, he, he said he was, he was losing his strength and his, uh, his strength and his breath. So they dropped him down and turned around. They, all the houses on the, at that, from that point where they dropped him, they set them on fire in a compound called Indian Chica compound. That man will have to. In Stendhal is my own compound. So about four or five houses or six were burnt down in that compound. So they came out to the square, called them Amokabe Square. There are two vehicles parked in front of that square. They set those vehicles on fire. And when they left Amokabe Square, they came to uh, a drinking parlor belonging to one man called Uju, where he sells beer, and people were drinking there. So those people were drinking, scattered, and ran away. They set that vehicle on fire, and they burned the house belonging to one Iran. 
zero the, the bond that is sars the sars is completely burned down from top to the bottom and they left the house and got to a man called G. Ume, who was very two weeks ago. His two vehicles were parked in front of his house. They set those two vehicles on fire. When you get to a man, you see them. There was also a motorcycle beside this. They set, all set it all on fire and then left a man. It has displaced people in the community. Yesterday, or two days ago, yesterday, I, I appealed to the army commander, 14 brigade. I say I want to come and meet you with my own community elders, so that we agree on broker peace for Amangu, so that my people who have all Fakete village should come back. Eventually, we went there, and we begged him and said, "Let these people come back." He told us that these people, that the army came to Amangu, not for Amangu people. That what it came for is that there is a soldier who was shot at Ebem. And then the people who shot him came from Amangu. And they, they ran back into Amangu in the in the Hillox Force. Because this is information I don't know. I'm not I don't know about it. But that's what the commander said. And that they were pursuing these uh, people. I said I don't know about that. Okay. I said I don't know about that. But that's what the commander said. There's nobody camping in my community. I'm not aware. If they are camping, I'm not aware. What I know is that on the 31st, no, not 31st, yes, 29th, on 29th of, uh, of June, 20, 29th of May, when this man was uh, buried, Opaya Opaya was buried, one man called Isi Bumba. As soon as they finished burying that Upaya uh, Wukpai, he came home with some gadgets which he mounted at strategic points in the square on electric poles. He mounted them about five of them. And people started rumoring that he's mounting surveillance materials to, 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 to record what is happening at Amman. So that after two days, I think that was on the first or thirty first, Monday, thirty first. Some people came into Amango and destroyed those things and went to his house and burnt his house. They said it's a sabo. These people I don't know them. When they burnt his house, I was sitting in my parlor, uh, sorry, in my veranda, when they drove past my veranda. I went to his house and burnt his house. They came out, I was sitting on my own uh, on my seat on, in my veranda. I heard somebody say, look at, look at his flag, look at his flag. Pull it down, pull it down. But don't touch anything. Two people came out from that vehicle and pulled down my flag and took it away. It's Nigerian flag. I have that flag in front of my house as a traditional ruler, as an onyeze. They left with it. And uh, after that, I learned uh, this is Sibumba who was in his house when the, his house was on fire. Later on, he managed to try to escape from his house and he was pursued by maybe these people who, who pulled down my flag. They pursued him and he eventually escaped to America and down to Mahir. 